Good morning guys, welcome to Operation Crypto. Market update today and um, we had a shit day yesterday, didn't we, price? <laughs> we was looking well, we, uh, we formed a bull flag here, we formed another bull flag, pushed to the upside, hit 32,400, bang, down to the downside. And potentially that should have been something we should have expected. On yesterday's video I said, look, um, I think everybody's talking about it these days, aren't they? But quantitative um, tightening have started in the USA on the stock markets. We're pulling out around $1.1 million per minute. Um, and by the end of 2023, we're looking to pull out around $1.5 trillion or something around that. But it's quite a significant amount of money. Um, so yesterday, that took an impact. What happened yesterday was the dollar shot up, back up to this level of resistance here. And it's so far it's had a bit of rejection. And the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 also um, had a sharp fall too. Um, but is what is, we've kind of seemed to have bottomed. Maybe that was the just the initial news impact saying, look, this is what's going to be happening. Very much uncertainty. I think the vast majority would have, would have thought and would have presumed that pulling 1.5 or whatever amount is, a uh, million dollars out of market or trillion dollars, should I say, is a significant thing. Maybe if we were pulling it out within the space of two months, then I think we'd see a colossal impact. But because they are pulling out over an 18 month period, yes, it is going to take some effect, but there's going to be buyers stepping in at some point as well to, to offset that. Probably not that much because that is a significant amount, but it's probably not going to be as a sharp, consistent drop like most people are expecting. And there are other things that the Fed can do to to, to harness and help the market uh, prosper and, and not drop down to um, certain death, which uh, most people are considering at a minute. Obviously, with that happening, Bitcoin has taken um, a sharp tumble down as two, and it was a bad day for Bitcoin yesterday. I mean, from the highs at 32,400 to the very lows, we dropped around $3,000, which was closing on 10% of uh, Bitcoin value, which is a very significant amount. And it's not something that we like to see. But if we go back to this area now, we are obviously back in the range. So this is a range I've been banging about forever. We've got the high range here, we'll drag that across. That is an area we need to break through. And then this is the lower range here where we need to get those closures um, above there. I mean, we had a couple of deviations here. We had a smart wick down, which um, got bought up. And obviously, if we just drag the EQ around, so the EQ is an equilibrium. That is a central trading area. You can work it out if you mark your lower range there with a horizontal ray. Mark the high range with a horizontal ray too. I mean, if you go to this section here, date and price range, you'll just click that and you'll drag it from top to bottom and it will give you the EQ. So that works out the central point. And as you can see, it is worth doing because if you're a trader, you could use that to your advantage. You could have gone long there and so far it means a decent bit of profit. If you look at that in terms of a um, a profit price uh, price range there. So if you've managed to get at the EQ, you're talking at 1.2% without any leverage. I got a question yesterday on, I think it was yesterday's video of a video before, somebody said, how are you doing leverage trading when you're in the UK, is it not banned? Unregulated exchanges can still um, prosper and can still use them. It's a regulated exchange which are banned, so we've got Binance, um, I think Bybit still potentially can use that for leverage, but some exchanges which want regulation um, and you need to do KYC, you cannot do that in the UK. But I'm using BitGet, um, and I've been using, I've switched from Binance because I think it's just a better platform. And also, if you sign up, there's a potential $4,163 in rewards. There's a good chance that you're not going to get that $4,000. But here, if you're looking for some free crypto, all you have to do is a few things. You can do KYC. Personally, I've not done a KYC uh, for three dollars and no point anyway. You can do this without KYC. So um, spot trading rewards, you can receive ten dollar coupon just for spot trading. Uh, fifty dollars there for futures trading and fifty dollars for copy trading. Copy trading is quite good. There's quite a lot of traders on there. You can follow. There's there's hundreds. So if you find uh, um, a, a trade you want to follow, you can copy them and it'll pretty much do the trading for you. So you'll find a link for BitGet in the description of this video, so go and check it out. A couple of things I want to take a look at before we move on to some other price analysis is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. I'm surprised yesterday it jumped all the way up to 17. Um, I think any movement that's happening on Bitcoin now, this Fear and Greed Index is, is acting quite... Um, re re reacting quite hard. So I mean, we was down at 10 and then jumped up to 17 on a little 2 or 3k move. 
shows quite a lot of indecision in the market, in my opinion. And I think there is. I think there's a lot of indecision. Um, I mean, predominantly, everyone is bearish on this. It's just that relief bounce, what people are expecting, and they're expecting the price to continue down. I think the same is the most likely to happen. Um, but usually when you think something's the most likely to happen in crypto, it sends you the other way. And the vast majority is short. The vast majority are on the sidelines in USDT. There's a good chance it will go down. But just going um, on the opposite side of your emotions, there's a good chance it could always also pump as well. I know everything's looking a bit bleak out there. Markets are looking horrific, but... Sometime in the future, whether that's now or in a couple of years' time, Bitcoin will surprise us and it will really push on hard because, in my opinion, it is the future of finance and it is a, uh, something that will take over um, that gold reserve at some stage um, in the not-too-distant future. So if you're looking for any type of trading now, there's a couple of things you can do. What you can do is wait for us to fall through this EQ and look for a long position down here around 28,600. If we start pushing up now, you could do a short position here at 30,500. But it depends, keep some tight stop losses because we could even blast straight through there or we could just carry on straight up here and go back to this level here. Green band up here is a thick weekly level of resistance, so that's something to monitor too. In terms of um, stop losses, I wouldn't have them that dis I mean I'd have them probably two to three percent max. Um you don't want to be losing too much in this very uncertain market. Just look at the um the RSI there, look how low we dropped on that on that drop. So we dropped right down and you can expect that we are bouncing at a minute. On the daily time frame the RSI we've had a sharp spike to the downwards from fifty percent. I still think we're going to continue up to be honest. I think last time we, we saw any major oversold territory down here we did continue self, but price of the well, the RSI point just went sideways, and then we got that major relief bounce up. Same here. If you look at that COVID nineteen dump, we touched the same level that we touched now, and then we went on to push on. Obviously, you can't take RSI um, as any given indicator to say what's going to happen, but it can historically tell something that's going on, and it, it doesn't factor in any of the global macro outlook, what's going on across the board, what's going on across the global economy. So. Take it with a pinch of salt, but historically, we have had a good reaction um, off that level. Just taking a quick look at some altcoins, RSI's dumped down high. Somebody said in my Telegram group, said, look, um, where should I be looking to buy um, RSI? And I said here, this 618 level, we actually lost it when Bitcoin dumped, but we've managed to find some support here, which is a nice level here. So that's bound so far. Need to flip this 618 to support, I and mean, then hopefully can push on to around 7 cent. VeChain, I'm not covered for that for a while, but hopefully this afternoon um, I'm going to get a VeChain price analysis update out for you. And then Polkadot, malingering around 10, between 9 and $10. Great buying opportunity for me. This. I'm, I'm just consistently loading up on Polkadot. I know, I do know that I can go down a lot further, but at some stage you need to start buying and start laddering in. And this is my high point now. Well, it could turn out to be, it could turn out not to be, but for me, this is where I'm starting to ladder in. Obviously, I do know it's going to come down lower, but that is the opportunity to take. And that's a risk you take. You don't get anywhere without taking a little bit of risk. And for me, um, especially with the high caps, I think the risk is slightly um, dwindled. So I think it's a decent level to start buying in my own pocket. And some altcoins look really good. Some, some A lot of these altcoins are between 90 and 95% down, which you'd think, not a chance I'm buying up. But if a team and the project is still fundamentally strong, buy it up hold on and i think you will prosper from that within the next couple of years but that's it that's it uh, the market update from me if you're new to this channel please make sure that you are subscribed please check bit get out it is a uh, it's a much better exchange than binance plenty going on there plenty of altcoins leverage trading margin trading the works but like i say that's it i'll catch you next time